The new season of Stranger Things drops on July 4th, and it's been over a year since we've heard from Eleven, Mike, and the rest of the gang. We don't know much about what they'll be up to for season three, but we know one thing's for sure. Hawkins is getting them all. Today, Hawkins is taking another step into the future with the brand new Star Court Mall. Netflix teased the return of the show last year with a glorious, nostalgic mock commercial for the opening of the Star Court Mall. For a show steeped in 80s culture, the opening of a brand new mall seems about right. But these days, malls look a lot less like this and more like this. According to one analysis, roughly a quarter of US malls will close by 2022. So how did we get here? And can dead malls find new life? To find out, we spoke with Ellen Dunham Jones, a professor of architecture and urban design at Georgia Tech. My name is Ellen Dunham Jones, and I study how to retrofit suburbia. So the third season of Stranger Things is set in 1985, and clearly malls are gonna play a big role in the show. What role did malls play in America in the 80s? Malls played an enormous role. They really became the place to go. I think the role of malls in our culture was especially important for teenagers. They were shopping for an identity because suddenly you had this homogenization. It's all, it's all chain stores. It's not some unique little boutique on a main mom and pop shop in your community. They're selling the same clothes that the TV shows are showing. And it was a little bit of a pre-chewed identity um, that later generations suddenly said, that's really boring and the last thing on earth um, that, that some of us want. but. At the, in the 80s, it was pretty big. So Ellen, you were just mentioning that uh, the malls, when they grew to be so popular, especially with teen culture, they really disrupted the mom and pop stores in downtowns. And actually in the trailer for Stranger Things season three, there's, uh, there's a scene where you can see people holding protest signs. Um, and I wonder if you could speak a little bit to the effect that suburban malls really had on the centers of cities and on mom and pop stores. The story between the cities and the suburbs is a, sort of a pretty long story. The heyday of the cities, the, the image of the big bustling metropolis is really the 20s. The 1930s, the depression hits. Everybody's pretty flat. The 40s, we're at war, World War II. By the time the veterans come back from World War II, the cities have not been invested in in over 20 years. And so the the way to kickstart the economy was let's build suburbia and give everybody brand new fresh homes. Through the 50s, through the 60s, through the 70s, 80s, 90s, the cities were really not invested in. So all the money, all the infrastructure, all the private development, it was all going out to the suburbs. And malls were just very much a part of that. The 90s is when mall development starts to slow down. And then it comes to a big halt by the mid 2000s. And cities start to actually become invested in again. We see a lot of those little mom and pops and main streets coming back uh, with more local shopping and more local identities. Let's talk about all of these empty malls. How many have closed? How many more are closing? In general, it's safe to say that there are 1,500 properties in the U.S. that at one time have been an enclosed shopping mall. We're now down to a little under 1,000. So we've lost fully a third of our malls. A lot of people say, well, we'll probably lose another quarter, about 250. I look at just in my database all of the proposals to redevelop, re-inhabit these properties. I've got over 450 that I'm tracking. And so that tells me that there's more likely about a third of those malls not being enclosed shopping malls much longer um, in, a, in a pretty short period of time. There are several YouTube channels I noticed that are devoted to kind of being obsessed with dead malls. And it reminded mm -hmm. me of like the ruin porn when Detroit had gone bankrupt and everyone was obsessed with looking at the old abandoned buildings. What, what's yeah. going on with that? What is our cultural obsession with, you know, vacancy and death? I mean, I think there's always been the, the frisson of the abandoned and the, the, this, the sublime 
is a, its own form of terror and beauty. That was that, that goes back to the the romantics in the 19th century wrote about, you know, standing on a glacier, looking at the tip of the iceberg and feeling feeling small relative to the rest of the world. Yes, but the romantics, when they were looking at that glacier, uh, I, I love them and I studied them. Part of the um, feeling of that sublimity was that they were like, this glacier could crush and kill me, and yet I survive. So is that how we feel that like exactly. capitalism and death could come for us? Exactly. I mean, if the mall could collapse, oh my God, you know, just in that it's the end of the world. What is going on? Why, what, what is responsible for the fall of the mall? Newspapers like to jump to the, the, the headline, oh, it's online shopping. It's the, more like the nail in the coffin than it really is the beginning. The, the decline of malls really starts in the 90s, mostly because we built so many of them, they began to cannibalize each other. So you start to get just some re, a lot of repositioning of malls as they're kind of evolving into new things if they're in a good market. If they're in a weak market, though, you started to see a lot of mall owners just simply default on their loan. It's, it's the shifting of jobs and shifting of wealth. It's also just demographics. Suburbia was always built on the assumption that it's kind of you're building mostly starter homes for new young families. Today, there are half as many households with kids that there were in the 70s. Is part of the decline of malls also due to the fact that now we spend that time gathering online? Absolutely. I mean, I think that there's a, a lot of that social function is being substituted with online. The former Surgeon General declared that the U.S. is in a loneliness epidemic. And much of this he blamed on substituting social media for really being in social spaces. The reality is the malls, they are gathering spaces, but it's still generally you have to be spending at least some money to be able to hang out there. But they certainly did serve that function for generations. Absolutely. What are these malls that that fail turning into and being redeveloped as? All sorts of things. And it, it depends a lot on the market. There are folks who are able to sort of revive a dead mall with just new retail and throwing in a lot more restaurants. What I'm really interested in are where folks are looking at the death of this property as an opportunity to help a 20th century suburb address 21st century problems. So a big chunk of them are being redeveloped as really the downtown that suburb never had. So they're tearing down most of the mall, putting in a street grid, ground level retail apartments and offices up above. They're becoming more like cities. But that only works where there's a strong market. Where the jobs have gone away or where population is stagnant and or shrinking, which is a lot of the country, then often what happens is the malls are getting re-inhabited with more community serving uses. The most common is actually just to become office space. Other reuses are either as for medical uses, lots of educational uses, and lots of churches, lots of religious groups going at taking over uh, malls. The third group of them are the regreenings. Now that those properties are dying, it's a great opportunity to actually depave these places, reconstruct the wetlands, put in community gardens, parks, that then increases the value of the properties adjacent to them and triggers some redevelopment. So there actually, there are quite a few um, Entrepreneurs who have figured out how to tap into the apocalyptic imagery of the dead mall. So there's a, a quite a number of malls that, um, while they're sitting there dead, they offer paintball zombies. In a mall outside of London, you're given the paintball and you're, you try to shoot the zombies who are professional actors. And there's a whole script that goes along and you don't really know. So, okay, that nursing unit over there, are they there to protect me or are they going to infect me so I become a zombie? It's, it's amazing what people will come up with, I think. <laughs> well, so these dead malls in some ways are like a living metaphor and then we can sort of in, inhabit them in ways that terrify and scare us and like tap into something, which maybe is what Stranger Things is probably planning to do. I mean, I imagine that they're gonna play up the nostalgia of the malls and then terrify us inside the mall. 
Okay, well, Ellen, this has been so lovely. Thank you so much for your time, and this has been fascinating. I hope you get a chance to watch season three. Oh, my pleasure. Absolutely.